So I wanted to see if you could somehow either predict the outcome or control the outcome um, of a coin flip. And both of you were looking at if the coin flip was 50-50, like truly 50-50. I want to see if that was actually true. So there's this one guy, his name is Percy Diaconis. And he does, he like analyzes coin flips and other statistics stuff, but he's known for the coin flip thing. And he said that a coin flip is not necessarily like a random event. It, it's a deterministic process. So like if you know the initial speed and you know the how fast it's turning, then you can predict the outcome. But it's obviously pretty hard to know those initial conditions. So he he analyzed the mechanics of the coin flip. And he saw that the f- it doesn't actually flip around its axis of symmetry. What it does, it, it actually processes, which procession is like the axis of rotation is actually rotating itself. So like if you imagine like a top and the top starts to get wobbly, that, that means it's processing. Okay. So um, if it was flipping, analyzing a flip is just like a two parameter analysis. It's pretty simple. But analyzing a procession is a 12-parameter analysis. So it gets way more complicated. You had to measure, like, the distribution of angular momentum, and it got, like, super complicated. But he said he did it, and... <laughs> but, but, but he said he did, and we believe him. <laughs> yeah, I believe him, because I didn't want to... Do didn't it myself. Do it myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what he found was that a coin flip actually isn't truly 50-50. So there's, like, a 51% bias towards one side, and... It's not specifically towards tails or specifically towards heads. There's a 51% bias towards whatever side you start on top. Huh. So if you see someone flipping a coin and you see that heads is on top, if you guess heads, you have a 51% chance of winning. That'll show them. That'll get them <laughs> every time. And he said that's like a, a stable bias, like a reliable thing that happens every time. But that's if you if you like catch it, if... He didn't let it drop. He caught it in midair. I'll get to the dropping later. I'm going to cover that later. But 51% bias helps you a little bit. Obviously not a lot in predicting the outcome or controlling what you want to do. So that was the analysis of what they call a fair coin. But there is a such, such a thing as a biased coin, which is basically just a coin that significantly favors one side. So like, how do you make a biased coin? One way to do it is to make one side heavier than the other. Or that, that was like the question I had. Could I make a coin heavier than, on one side than the, and the other not as heavy? And would that bias it? And there's a, right. there's a paper that someone wrote. Or I think there's a few people wrote it. But the paper is called, You Can Load a Die, But You Can't Bias a Coin. And in the paper, he talks about his students. He teaches like statistics. And he had his students, he gave them the goal of, modifying a die and modifying a, a checker piece and their their goal was to encourage bias on both of those so what the students did was they sanded down the edges of the die to to influence the die and they had like sticky putty that they stuck onto one side of the checker to to weight that side of the checker and the results were that they they were able to influence the die and make it land on a specific side and for the checker, they were able to influence if they spun the checker, then the putty side would land down just because it's heavier. What, spun or flipped? Spin. So like if you spin like a top mm-hmm. on a table. Okay. You spin it. And you can actually do this with a penny too. A penny, Lincoln's head actually weighs heavier than the Lincoln Memorial on a, an American penny. But not in real life. <laughs> not in real <laughs> life. In real life, the Lincoln Memorial is much, much heavier. Yeah. So if you spin a penny it's actually going to land tail side up 80% of the time. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Now that is something useful to trick people with. <laughs> that is useful, but not in our case, because we cannot spin it. We have to flip it. So what they found was that when they flipped the checker piece, there was no bias at all. That bias kind of dis- disappeared from the spin. And to demonstrate this, the difference between the spin and the flip a little m- more, there's a guy named Edwin Thompson Janes, and he did an experiment with a pickle jar lid. He, he called the top of the lid heads and the bottom of the lid tails. And he spun it 100 times, and he flipped it 100 times. And when he spun it, it landed head zero times. And that's because, if you think of a pickle jar, it's basically like a hollow disc, but one side is missing. 
Mm -hmm. So the center of gravity is shifted towards the top. So that side is heavier and it falls that side. But then he flipped the jar lid and landed on heads 40, 54 times. So no bias at all. It's basically just 50%. And that was also uh, catching the lid slash coin instead of letting it drop. So you can't bias a coin if you catch it. But can you bias a coin if you let it drop? So there's a guy named John Edmund Kerich who did an experiment in 1941. And he flipped a coin and let it bounce on a cloth like on the ground or on a table or something. He let it bounce. And he flipped a, a fair coin 10,000 times. It's a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some people needed better things to do with their lives. Yeah, well, it was 1941. I don't know what was going on then, but he was probably pretty bored. War, mostly. Some people were pretty busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was not busy. Actually, I think he was like a prisoner or something. He was doing this in a cell. <laughs> that makes sense, actually. So he flipped a fair coin 10,000 times. And it got fair results. It landed on heads 5,067 times. Um, so basically 50%. And then he made a biased coin, which was he took a wooden disc and then he, he coated one side with lead. So that side's heavier. From his jail cell, I imagine. Yeah, I don't know how he did that from a jail cell. Like how he coated it, but he got lead. Somehow. Hi, can I have some molten lead? Can you just dip this in molten lead, please. I yeah. need to continue my coin experiments. Oh, maybe they were interested in the experiment. <laughs> um, he flipped that a thousand times because I guess he didn't want to do ten thousand again. <laughs> it's fair, yeah. And it landed on heads six hundred and seventy-nine times. So there is a slight bias when he let it bounce, and is approaching sixty sixty-eight percent. So. Why is this? So there is that bias when it spins, and when you let it drop, it some of that spin bias goes into the flip. So something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it makes it makes sense to me in my head. I have no idea how to explain. Yeah, I don't it. know how to explain right. it. But like, I imagine if it, it hits a bounce and then like, no, I'm gonna stop because I I I just re I was thinking ahead of my next words and it, they didn't make any sense. I mean, if you imagine a coin flipping and hitting the ground, a lot of the times it does end up spinning and it ends up in a spin. So that's that's there's true. Some sort of spin influence on it. So that's one way to influence a coin and and get bias out of a coin if you want to control your outcome. Another way is to actually bend the coin. That's if you let it bounce as well. So if you bend the coin, there was one guy that bent. A bunch of, he bent like six coins at different increments and he flipped each of them a hundred times and the flat one landed heads 53 times obviously that's what you expect one of the coins that was bent about 90 degrees landed on heads 41 times and then one of the coins that was bent basically so that the ends were parallel with each other that landed on heads 27 times so obviously that's pretty big bias uh, and to basically just guarantee the outcome of your flip, you could just bend the coin so that the ends are touching. <laughs> yeah, and then, it's, and then you just have a... Does that count as a coin? It doesn't count as a coin if you have a half piece. It's like still a, a, a coin, I think. <laughs> you've gone from pizza to calzone. Yeah. Would you still call it the same name? I don't know. That's up to you whether you count that or not. I count it. <laughs> That's up to you, the listener, to decide if you would count this in your hypothetical situation. I count yeah. it. Vending machines don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't use the coin, but you don't want to use the coin because you need I it count, to make decisions. I, I don't count it. My guy at the bank looks at me funny every time I bring him some. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically just, that's the way you can guarantee your outcome. And the, the last thing I want to look at, I want to try something. So I'm going to flip a coin and Ben, heads or tails? Heads. Okay, what about you, Marcus? Tails or heads? Heads. Okay. I'm not actually going to flip a coin, but... <laughs> <laughs> what? You liar. I wanted to see what you guys would answer. So Ben, I feel like Marcus's answer was kind of influenced by Ben's answer a little bit. Usually the results that I found are like isolated. But what people say is that when you ask someone heads or tails, 80% or 79% of the people pick heads. And the reason that is, is because you're presenting the question as heads or tails. You're saying heads first. So when I asked Marcus, I said tails or heads, but I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> <laughs> so I like to say, I, so so me, this is my brain work in action. I like to say heads because I like to just make the one that's positive for me um, heads 
because I don't want to get excited about heads and then realize <laughs> I'm wrong and lose. Okay. So That's weird... it's just straight social anxiety influences my my picking coin my my picking coin flips. So what they found was in this study that they did, seventy nine percent people picked heads and they rephrased the question so that heads wasn't first. They didn't say tails or heads. They said enter T for tails and H for heads just because if you say tails or heads, it kind of sounds weird Mm -hmm. just because it's so ingrained in our minds. Right. And when they phrased it like that, 69% picked tails instead of heads when it was when it was introduced first. Mm, Well, T is an easier letter to write. (laughs) (laughs) So obviously the terms like heads or tails, that's a cultural term that we're used to. So they actually found that that has an influence over you. Just using the terms heads and tails has an influence over you. And maybe that's why Marcus picked heads is because he has that cultural influence. It's the cultural voodoo on my brain. (laughs) Yeah. So to take out that cultural bias, they did it again with, instead of heads and tails, they said orange and purple um, or purple and orange, like alternate. And what they found was, between 80 to 92% picked the first choice. 